Maybe you're doing certain things to help you sleep better at night, certain things because somebody told you to do it, certain things that you think are going to help you be prepared. Well, hopefully it doesn't look like what we have in these cases. I got into gold as a backup plan. You wouldn't know that if you just looked at this desk, but that's how it started. Collecting some of this stuff came as a side effect. Side effect of this channel of staying home more during the pandemic. Now, I haven't seen any real data on this, but that collecting phenomenon, it really had its moment for a few years in there. That was maybe the actual bug that I caught, but there was also a little bit more to this. I wanted to get my kids more interested. Not sure if that's been successful at all, but regardless, anything sitting in velvet here is relatively new. I was stacking very disciplined choices for at least a dozen years before I started buying some of these distractions. The discipline stuff was the kind of thing that I'd never have any trouble selling and also the kind of thing that I would never be sad to see go if I needed to sell it. That part can be easy to forget and I think it's important not to. Before we get back to it, if you're looking for precious metals, hit up SD Bullion. New customers even get gold and silver for spot. That's sdbullion.com slash new. So there are a couple reasons for the topic, but let me back up to 2021. I would say that I have somewhere in the 20 to 30 ounce range, maybe a little bit more in coins that require specific buyers. Now, coins that I'd either have trouble selling or that I can't really plan on holding the value of what I think they're worth. Now, some of these are coins that I'll never sell regardless, so it doesn't matter in those cases, but there are only a few of those. Take those out of the equation right now. What I do have that would be relatively hard to sell has become a significant amount. Now, I bring that up because I don't always do what I say. Now, to be clear, I don't have any real regrets here since some of the fun stuff also happens to be the gold that I'm specifically holding to hand down to my kids. Now, I've been talking to a few people in person, though, friends who are just starting out with gold, and I haven't said once to make sure that you're buying fun stuff, make sure you have something interesting that maybe your kids will like. So my justifications for some of this, probably pretty soft. So one of the advantages to gold over silver, at least in my opinion, is how compact it is. A tube of U.S. Mint bullion holds 20 ounces of gold, and that would be around $41,000 in today's value. So just being pragmatic, that's probably enough to cover any kind of initial reason that I would have had for getting into gold. So having a tube of gold that I could simply just take to any precious metals dealer, liquidate inside of an hour, would help mitigate any kind of financial emergency that I can think of, more or less. So I've talked about wanting two ounces of gold to subsidize some kind of bad stretch, bad stretch of a year or two maybe. In a case like that, I wouldn't need to liquidate 20 ounces over coffee. It would be drawn out and my local shops would take some of these Perth Mint coins too if I was bringing them in one at a time, two at a time, if it came to that. Now they're not gonna give me what they're worth at least not what they'd be worth to a collector, but the backup coverage in the gold weight itself is still there in all of these coins. So with the exception of the high relief coins here, I bought most of what you'd see here for about 6% premium over spot. So I'd be fine on most. You win some, you lose some. Oh man, the desk here is not prep gold. Some of it maybe. I use prep in the original sense. I'm not a prepper, but some people might be fooled friends even. So out in the real world, I actually had two conversations recently that kicked this whole thing off. Now, friends asking about gold. I think the most important part is being able to get back out of it. I'm just being realistic here. That probably sounds strange if you've already fallen well down the rabbit hole. Maybe you're fully inside Wonderland. Well, getting out of gold isn't going to be your top priority, but if you're new to this, if you're buying it as an emergency backup plan, you're just looking for advice here, you want rainy day savings, and that's it you should be buying gold that's easiest to sell. Now, one of the people I was talking to decided that they liked the Isle of Man angels. And the hell did they come up with that? I, mean, I don't know. But that's what happens when you have endless options given to you by the internet. I told them, knock it off. Buy eagles, buy buffaloes, buy maples, buy crooks. That's your list. Get in, get out. So what about Britannias or 
insert whatever else you've decided is the right choice for you. Well, sure, but this person lives in a small city and the local shops there that I know like the basics. That's what they should be buying. Now, if you want the Isle of Man angels, you need to think of them like an art collection, not like a backup plan. Now, it's interesting to me that gold plays a part to people as an emergency prep, but the advice in those circles does not line up with what I think is the most important, what I think is the most obvious. You need to buy whatever your local shops want most. Now, some of those preppers have networks, and inside those networks, they have agreements. If you have a network and you have an agreement to buy something else, well, that's what you should buy. Most of you don't, though. So this other friend thought the Valcambi chiclets were the way to go. Those 100 gram combi bars. So you break off some gold one gram at a time. Where did they come up with that? Well, I did a quick search and sure enough, I found preppers advising this was the way to go. It gives you the flexibility for smaller sales or trades. You trade for bullets, you can trade for bread. Now for most of us, I think that's terrible advice. I think walk before you run. Gold makes a great CYA savings model. You lose your job, you have a backup. Emergency medical bills, same. Extended downturn, sure. But when we're talking about a shit hits the fan moment, you won't be out there bartering with gold grams. Now, I would say the primary way that gold is going to work for you is as a recovery asset, meaning the world will still need to be functioning per usual, or at least it's getting back to it. Now, if it's a Mad Max world out there, you might as well bury that gold because that would be caveman rules. It wouldn't be the people with the gold making the rules. It would be the people with the biggest clubs. So as you can see here on the desk, I'm saying one thing, I'm doing something else. I usually show at least one coin in every video that just does not follow the starter advice. And look, we're all adults here. If we want to buy Perth Mint Dragons or Isle of Man Angels, nobody's going to stop us. And if you're making a choice like that, can you afford to take a little bit less from a local shop? Or can you afford requiring a little bit more time to move it by sending it to an online dealer? Probably. And like I said, there were a few things that prompted this video, the real life conversations, and then just a gut check on liquidating some of what I have. I just got some buyback estimates on most of what you see here. And I can tell you that the easy selling options do not make the fun stuff profitable. You need to get on eBay. You need to find private buyers. So if your goal is to create a backup fund that would help you sleep better at night, well, having an exit plan that requires auction sites will not get you there. Now that's me scolding myself. If your goal is to have some fun, sure, go for it. Probably eventually a lot of us start thinking about both. So bringing this all back, you've heard me say a hundred times by now to buy the coins of your realm first. If you're in the United States, you know what they are, Eagles, Buffaloes. Consider popular, cheaper options like Maple Leafs, like Krug's second, and stick to your plan. I've started storing my gold differently. I have the basic purpose gold and mint tubes. I have some of it vaulted. I have the fun stuff in specific display cases. Those cases have finite slots. So that means when I get one filled up that I'm planning to give to one of my kids, well, I can close it up, I can lock it away and be done with it. Now, this is one of those topics with a lot of crossover, and I don't really get out into the edges very often. So if you're interested in hearing more about how I'm handling the different types of gold that I have, let me know. I'm rethinking some of those vaulting options. I'm rethinking storage for some of the stuff for my kids. And I'm probably going to be selling off some of that fun stuff that just doesn't make sense anymore, at least not the way that... I thought it would. Now, on the other side of this thing, I've seen preppers showing bug out bags. It looks like a lot of junk a lot of the time. And maybe I need to get in there. I show what I think would make the cut in an emergency situation. See if I can out prep some of those preppers. Probably not. I think if we need to be making a compass out of a nail and some driftwood, I'm not going to be a good resource for you. But if you have to get out of your house for a few weeks, flood, zombie horde, whatever, you can be pretty sure that you'd want to take your gold with you, most of it at least. These tubes do not take much room, and there are a lot of reasons to have your gold organized and ready to go. So let's call it good there. The point of this video is to show how different gold can be in terms of use cases, savings versus collections. I think we did that. So let us know what you think. Do you have different use cases? Do you stick to one or the other, or do you just throw it all in a treasure chest? Let us know. And then while you're in the comments, be sure to hit the like button if you found any of this interesting. Be sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on if you'd like to see more on the topic. And if you're still here, thanks again for watching. I always appreciate your time. Take care.